Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant, that everyone knows now, is playing absolutely out of his mind. And I don't think anyone would disagree that it has a, a large part of that success has to do with where he landed. If he's in Indianapolis, it probably looks completely different. Uh, but he's in a system where Kyle Shanahan's calling the plays. He has all those playmakers around him. And that defense is one of the best in the NFL. Still, Brock Purdy is out there making plays consistently. And my question to you is, a year after trading up to number three and selling the farm for Trey Lance, unfortunately, he got hurt early in the season against Chicago. He missed the rest of the year. Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt. He's out of contract. If you're the general manager, are you taking phone calls about Trey Lance? Are you calling people about Trey Lance to try to move on from him? What are you doing with the quarterback situation heading into the next season? Well, I, I would say this, that it tells you what type of football coach Kyle Shanahan mm. is. And some of the people I talked to, some of the people that have actually been out at the practices, they said there is not a better football coach and a better offensive play caller, I believe, in the NFL than what, what, what Kyle Shanahan has done. And he's had some losing records as well, too. But they do have such a great um, support cast around the young quarterback uh, with Debo Samuel, with the trade with Christian McCaffrey. They've got a championship caliber defense and playing lights out right now. They got a young defensive coordinator that's just a matter of not just a matter of when, when he's going to be the next head coach of an NFL team. So, they have a lot of pieces in place. And then you take a play caller like Kyle Shanahan that knows Brock Purdy better than anybody and what's going to work and not work and, and, and have the success that he's had. And it's not just like a one or two game snapshot. And I don't want to make comparisons, but like Mike White comes in and maybe plays good for one or two games and he goes back to Mike White and he's a backup quarterback. So the positive situation is that you have Trey Lance who you, really truly believed in and was going to give the uh, the reins over to him this year until unfortunately he got hurt. Now, physically, I don't know if Purdy is as athletic as, as a Trey Lance is, but what he's done on the field and what he's done over the six weeks that he started and what he did in that playoff game, again, it was against the Seattle defense that needs some uh, fixing uh, <laughs> here in the off season, but you got to give the kid credit for what he's done. So you're in a situation where, okay, you, now you know that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to go move on and go somewhere else. So now you got a Trey Lance and you got a Brock Purdy. Do you want to trade away a Trey Lance and then get in a situation where they're back into their down to their third quarter? That's hard to replace mm -hmm. a lot of quarterbacks. Let's say you got rid of Garoppolo and you got rid of Trey Lance and you got Purdy. Well, then who? What happens if he gets hurt? So it'll be interesting to see how they play this out. It's always at that position. If you have two guys of that quality, um, maybe you just have an open competition and see what happens. And then if one beats the other out next training camp, maybe you put them on the uh, on the open market and, and gotcha. see what happens too. It's but, funny because – go ahead. Yeah, you, you just got to – you can't predict the injuries. And for them to go through three quarterbacks this year – and still have the success that they're having, that's an incredible job by that coaching staff. It's crazy. And you have some history with this because you drafted Christian Ponder in the first round. A few years later, Matt Castle was your starter. You drafted Teddy Bridgewater. We talked about this on the last podcast uh, about you know, with Rick's picks, how, how Teddy Bridgewater ended up in Minnesota. But there was a situation where Matt Castle started the season. I think this was Teddy's rookie season, right? And then yep. he got hurt. Teddy B comes in. He gets hurt, and Christian has to play a little bit. But let me ask you about that dynamic, and then we'll get out of here. Let's say that they have the competition, Trey Lance versus Brock Purdy. Let's say Brock Purdy wins. Is there any concern that your number three overall pick, and Trey Lance, by all accounts, is a great guy, but there might be some friction in the locker room because he's no longer the guy when he thought he was going to be the guy? Yeah, no, I'm, 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 you know, because of all the expectations that were put on Trey Lance, especially with the draft capital and move up where they went to get him. Um, and maybe Trey Lance is better than Brock Purdy if he was in a situation right now. Right. You know, so to me, it's a great problem to have, <laughs> you know, to have a Trey Lance and, and, and a Brock Purdy on your roster um, because you can't have enough of those guys. And especially if you look, they're not paying either of these guys $40, 50000000 million a year. So that gives you the flexibility while they're under their rookie contracts to add all the pieces that they've been able to add 
to make sure that these guys have the best chance of success. So, uh, but it's, it's been, I mean, if everybody thought that, uh, and even if, the, if they thought that Purdy was going to be this good, then may, why wouldn't you have drafted him earlier? Right. You know, I always said, everybody goes, well, God, what a great seventh round pick. Well, I said, if I was that smart, we would have drafted him a lot earlier. Um, so those are the things that actually uh, are positive if, if you're able to handle it the right way and to watch the way the San Francisco organization and John Lynch and them handled the, the Jimmy Garoppolo situation yeah. last year uh, and the way that all ended up working out for them where he ended up coming back. But now you look back at that, you're, you're almost like, I can't believe we have these three quarterbacks on one roster, uh, especially with the injuries. So let's say if they, they go with Purdy and he gets hurt, and they moved away from Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo's gone, you got to have at least try to have two on your roster if you can. And if they have Trey Lance and Purdy on their roster next year, they're going to be in pretty good shape. I think you're right. I, I think the the math is such that you you keep both these young guys that you talked about. The contracts are fashioned in such a way that you're not paying anything for them, and, and let them sort it out. Let the competition decide who starts, and and then go from there. And if that means Trey Lance, then Brock Purdy is certainly comfortable being a backup. If it means uh, Brock Purdy, then Trey Lance will have to figure it out and and find ways to get better. But right, I don't think you go with one or the other and then take the draft picks only because you know you burn some draft picks on on, on the Trey Lance deal. That just doesn't seem smart. Although maybe. Most, they, yeah, but, you know, and then I don't think they're going to think this, but, you know, they gave up a lot of draft capital to get Christian McCaffrey, too. And that, too, right, yeah. So, uh, eventually, you know, they've kind of went all in a little bit this year. Eventually, you're going to have to get that draft capital back uh, in order to to fill your roster back in, unlike, you know, the Rams were able to do after winning the Super Bowl and uh, not having the draft capital to replace a lot of those guys, a lot of the older guys as they're coming along.